some cow noises. Mark Markster. Zach Lazy Lumberjack. Interesting. Good to see everybody. Who do we got here on stage? Uh, Michelle here. Mysterious is here. I'm Sasha's in mouth here. Woohoo. I'm guessing Volcron hey. will be here any moment as well. Yes, sir. Oh, there it is. There he is. Whoop. There he is. Um, BRB, I'm just going to go play a Town Star on Godot really fast. <laughs> <laughs> fast because the frame rate's fast. Yeah. Um, while we're sort of warming up, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, got some great stuff to share today, of course. Pixie, welcome. Pixie Van Art, welcome. Ralph M. Gand Ralph the Gray, nice, nice. It is a little bit tricky here on mobile. I guess if I got a big old, uh, big old device, I might see your names more clearly. Um, maybe I ought to do that with my iPad. But anyways, welcome, folks. Uh, I don't know, Michelle. Maybe it's time to get started. What do you think, Mysterious? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's roll. Sounds good. Let's roll, guys. I'll try my hardest not to yell today. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Michelle's talking. <laughs> Cover your ears. Uh. Uh, it's been a real exciting week here. We got our play test up and going. That was absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy that so many people are enjoying it and jumping in and playing. Uh, let's see what else happened this week here. Let me find the changelog channel. We got the woodshed NFT was added to the game. The Valentine's stand, the passive strawberries was added to the game, and the water bottle storage NFTs were all added to the game. Those also got sent out a couple days ago, so everybody should have their water barrel storages now for playing the game in January. The common one for 10 days and the uncommon one for running your node for six hours a day for 10 days. And that was about it for game updates that happened last week. Uh, last I heard, the plan for... This next game update was to try to get it out today, but I don't know for sure if it's going to make it out today or if we're going to wait until Monday before the competition. I'll let you guys know as soon as I find out. And that's about all I've got for Townstar Live updates. Nice. We doing the Godot update now? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, I hope... Uh... Let's see. Willow, are you listening? Willow's listening. <laughs> Should get in the Townstar discussion, not the testers channel. Sorry, one sec. Do, do, do. Um, yesterday was an awesome day. I hope everybody had fun who got to play. Um, I My town's still going. I'm gas positive. Um, just like after eating at certain restaurants. <laughs> so, having... <laughs> My God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Boom. <laughs> it's uh yeah, speaking about leaks. I mean I <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> so, um, well then. Yeah. <laughs> so uh let's see. I haven't heard too many super, super actually no super alarming bug reports yet. I was genuinely excited to see what people had been saying, so I got up really early this morning and was reading through Discord and checking our, of course, our server logs and dashboards and all that good stuff. And um, really happy <laughs> with Sashi. <laughs> uh, just really happy with how it went. And um, I know as a player, right, you, you're you always curious, like, oh, what's going on in the back end and things you can't see and all that. And just months and months and months of, like, preparation and everything coming together. I'm so proud of this team. Uh, I know this is our first play test. It's not, you know, obviously there's, NFTs and not in there and stuff like that, but man, what a what an awesome day! So anyway, recent changes, and then I'll get into coming soon. Um, let's see, recent changes. Obviously, the play play test went live. We're controlling that via a, a little allow list. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the surprise about the <laughs> hand scrawled MS Paint looking allow list from Discord. <laughs> um, the recent changes to our the game itself we added uh, over the past couple days and even yesterday, 
a few more tweaks behind the scenes, like charts and reports, stuff like that for live ops. Um, when we're investigating somebody's town, uh, like today, uh, Grumpy DK, um, I was helping him out a little bit and just testing out the full full run from like if somebody has a problem. I cloned Grumpy's town locally and was running it, and I'm like, yep, I see the same thing, foul a bug on it. Um, so closing that loop on being able to support and run the game was was awesome. Proof of content, of course it worked, and staging, why wouldn't it work here? But uh, that was great. Uh, so that was our town clone functionality was put to the test. And um, some good news about platforms. I think some of you loaded the game in iOS. You might have been pleasantly surprised at the frame rate and the load speed and the web browser. Uh, I think even our CEO did that. We did a test of our Android export, not a not web, but Android export itself, like the full app, and that was went really well. So that's looking good. And uh, obviously, there's some UI work that needs changed, but um, yeah, it's it's also it's uh, there was a question that came up about will we allow? This was yesterday. Let's just stuck this in some notes we had there. SageMaker and Michelle and everybody, but one person was saying, are we going to allow PC and Mac downloads? So not just web, not just iOS and Android, but are we going to do those desktops? And what I said was it's possible, and that's how we run it locally, so it's something to consider um, if people really want it. Um, probably get a lot better frame rate than running through a browser. I know I do. So that's on our mind, too. Uh, and then coming soon. Actually, hold on. Let me pause. Any thoughts, rants, questions? I'm reading the Soundstar discussion. Anybody? Bueller? Ooh. Oh my gosh, look at all these leaks. Are you all going to share these? Sir, I'm reading the back channel. Okay, well, let me, get, let me get on through the updates so you guys can get to the cool stuff. Coming soon, we're wrapping up the... Fast forward, a.k.a. the play offline feature. Some of you were asking yesterday, is um, is it in? Because sometimes it, it seems like my game will fast forward. All the trees will kind of poof all at once, you know, that kind of stuff. That is, I would call that more buffering than a true fast forward. So don't don't think that that's how our system is going to work. Uh, it's, it's coming. Uh, we're testing it out now. Uh, grid lines. Uh, a lot of people asked for that. It's already in progress. We're looking through the MR, uh, the merge request right now, making sure it's good. And then um, are we internally, I don't know how much this interests you guys, but some memory upgrades to our to Godot. Uh, obviously, it's a Godot product, and we might be able to contribute to that change that we make, that fix to Godot back to their ecosystem, but we got to clear that through, obviously, through Gallo Eagle and everything. Um Let's see, a couple audio tweaks, things like uh, probably not playing the music till the message of the day is clicked away. Uh, there was a little feedback in Discord about the uh, name chain or the profanity filter is a little too strong right now. And yes, Lazy Lumberjack, auto-aligning, that's part of it, yeah, snapping, that's what we're testing, snapping plus the visual. And um, one odd gent, thank you, updates are the cool stuff. <laughs> And uh, let's see. Oh, and the beloved production monitor. I know some of you were missing it. I know I am when I play. Um, we just didn't want to put it out there quite just yet. And it's getting wrapped up today. And we will see where it is. So I'm enjoying it. Uh, the team. He's only been on the team a couple months, if that long, I think. Um, he was one of the devs on Townstar Live. Uh, just took that over and knocked it out. So that's great. And I think that is it for updates for the game. Let's try to So I wondered if it'd be great, any folks that have been on testing, any questions that we haven't answered yet, it would be really cool to um, just kind of have, just take a quick moment and ask those questions here. What do you guys think? Backwards chicken skin in the future. I think that's wonderful. It's now become the moonwalking chicken is a meme. 
I would love that. I'm just requesting that on the back end, just so everyone knows. I am now demanding that there is a skin that lets the chickens walk backwards. It did. It did just show up in our Slack, just so everybody. I can confirm. That was on the case. Looking good on an iPad. Thanks, Peter. We haven't actually focused yet on on you know actually mobile responsiveness and and everything. So that's good to know. I see LV Postman asking when the towns will run offline. I'm not sure when uh, that feature is coming in. Yeah, we're testing it now. I see a question about the town to gala swap. I'll cover that in a little bit. Don't want to take away from the play test though. Well, it doesn't seem like a lot of, oh, maybe people asking questions in the play test channel. No. All right. Well, hey, um, I, I've got a, a clog waiting in my in my stand here, so let me just jump on and share a couple of things with folks. Um, there's three new uh, concept upgrades for buildings, nuclear plant, windmill, and woodshed. Uh, so that's that artwork uh, upgrade. The artwork process is continuing. Um, Want to share a little bit more. Uh, of something else going on. We also have, let me just upload these images here for folks to see. Um, everybody remembered that we were talking about uh, lighting and time of day tests. That continues. We actually got uh, the new chicken coop inside of the game there. And there's three different time of days. We're gonna test that. Um, uh, we gotta, the, the, what we're gonna do is, is what, what I'm gonna do, work with uh, our artist and we'll have to get here on get her on this, um, this, this AMA maybe next week to help kind of talk about this. But we'll go ahead and within the game, tweak lighting values for each of the time of days and get it to looking just really sweet and then figure out how to make time of day evolve. I think I talked about this before last week maybe, but I'll cover it again. You know, the, the natural kind of penchant or, or idea, the first idea that comes to people's mind is let's have, you know, like the time of day be just a, a very fast clock cycle. Instead of 24 hours, let's make it 20 minutes, right? And just progress across that full time from morning to night to back to morning in 20 minutes. Well, that could be cool, uh, but you know that kind of misses that uh, that moment of sitting with a, a time of day for a period of time, like uh, you know, just getting to absorb how cool the golden hour actually looks. If it's continuously changing, it never you never get to sit and kind of enjoy that experience. So. My thoughts after we get this system is to do something like we'll have it sit on if it's a if it's a twenty day excuse me twenty minute clock, we'll have it sit on morning for four minutes, have a one minute transition till noon, sit on midday sun for four minutes, have a one minute transition to golden hour, sit there for uh, four minutes, and then kind of move to uh, night. I'm not sure how long we'll keep night on there because night can actually it, it takes a lot of work to get it looking just perfect and sweet. Um, but we'll we'll see how that works. And yeah, I see people saying twelve hour clock cycle, twelve hour days, forty to sixty minutes. We'll figure out what that is. We'll just set it to be configurable, and we'll test it um, and get to see you know how it feels and how it works. Now, there are other features that we can build into time of day if we want. And so I want to be really careful to make sure we're mindful on this. You know, for example, um, what if there's flowers that only bloom at night? You know, there are those things. What if there's uh, you know, it's the mid middle of the day and there's some weather that come in effect, right? Um, the lighting will change in that. So there's a bunch of different kind of things going on. Um, so we'll figure that out. Uh, but Dubstep, I see you saying night can look fine with moonlight. That's true. That's true. We, we will have to have some light there because otherwise if we go total dark, um, two things will happen. You won't be able to see anything that's not lit. We'll have to add a bunch of lights. And I have serious concern about adding so many lights at night that it will crush the frame rate especially when the board size gets bigger and bigger, especially when we have things like street lights, right? And other emissive sources. So that's going on there. And what I'm gonna do real quick, um, let's see. So shared those uh, elements. And let me go ahead and just put some live movies. It's gonna take a moment to upgrade it, actually upload. I should have probably put that in there um, already, but uh, let's see how quickly these can get to you guys. And those are just some movies that uh, one of our devs created. 
Hopefully you guys can see those. Just little test cases. So that's, uh, yeah, that's all I have there on the lighting and art. My frame, Lazy Lumberjack, your frame is already crashed. What? Let's uh, stick that in the test channel. We need to know what's going on there. So Mysterious Michelle, I'm, that's all for me on this. If you guys have more for Godot. No, I mean, I'm just sucked in looking at these videos again. They're so cool. I think that it's fun to see how just the little lighting changes the game so much. And then with everything um, that, you know, our lead artist is working on. It's so cool. I even shared that note um, with her in in our chat. So thank you, Rocket Unit, for, you know, just the positivity. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm sure I'm sure she's going to love to see that. So really cool. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for Q&A if we want to go through those. So the first question I've got here is, it's long, so bear with me. It says, currently there are five servers we can use, allowing us to build up to five different concurrent town experiments, but only actively run one at a time. How many concurrent practice towns will we be able to create on the Godot platform version? A forever town is nice, but hopefully there will be some facility for us to make other towns that we don't ten intend to keep. Yeah, we talked about this um, back in the fall, sandbox mode, right? Some sort of sandbox town mode on a server where nothing matters. Didn't we talk about that, Mal, Michelle? I remember that being a really hot topic for a while. Was it November? We definitely did, but it was a while ago. Yeah. Maybe we should talk about it again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yes on a sandbox town. I like that idea of people can practice. I think we were calling them practice towns or something like that before, right? Yeah, the goal is, I think, for the competitions in the sense of just wanting to do different layouts, try them that way. Yeah. So, yes. Is that our answer? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think the yeah. cool thing is, right, you could have a competition town running, a forever town running, a test town running. The, the, the tech is set up to be able to do it, as far as I'm aware. And so um, we'll see exactly how that, that manifests itself. But the cool news is, Yes, you can. You can have multiple towns running at the same time, which definitely was not possible in the last version. That is live right now. So Hopefully, that satisfies Shiva, the question. Can say something? Yeah, I was going to say that uh, we've said this before, but the the current plan is to have one sandbox town available. Um, if we um, see the demand for more, we'll definitely check that out and see if we can provide more with different data sets. So you can try different things for different competitions. So it's definitely in the in the works. Cool. Awesome. And then just Pixel Mouse, that nighttime spooky lighting is going to be great for Halloween. Oh my God, yes, right? Oh my God, yes. Hey, remember, remember those NFTs that we had, the fireworks? Oh, right? Oh my God. Can't wait till we can get to that part where we have this in there and we just launch all those cool things. So much goodness. Uh, the next question that I had was, when will the NFT migration start? I don't know if we have any updates yeah. on when that will be or any. I, I can talk a little bit about this. I've touched on it before, but um, the NFT migration, right? Like, There's going to be a lot of cool reasons to, to migrate your NFTs over to our uh, Gallus blockchain. Um, Obviously, these, those don't in, exist yet. We, we haven't turned back on earning yet. Um, that work is ongoing right now, which is really cool. And so there will be a reason um, in the not too distant future to migrate your NFTs. But just want to, again, say um, it's not going to be a requirement that everybody migrate their NFTs all at once. There uh, will still be reasons, I'm sure, why you'll, uh, people will keep their uh, NFTs on ETH and still are able to use them in game. So we, uh, we will uh, give more information as that comes up, as we get back closer to earning and all of that. Um, so, so, so more to come, but there's, there's no need to, to be too worried about that uh, right, right at this moment. That's all I really had for questions. Uh, cool. Did we want to move on and talk about the town Galaswap? 
Let's yeah. just see. Well, before we jump to that, any questions in the community? It feels like, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, there weren't a lot of questions coming from Michelle, so I think maybe we just take a moment there. Uh, Ed77, can we get a clear list of which NFT should be on Jiri? For example, what about skins? Oh, that's a great question. What do you think, uh, Mysterious? Yeah, I think I think it will depend, right? So uh, right now, uh, I don't really see if, if I had a skin and we un, un, uh, released just earning, um, I wouldn't really feel the need to migrate it. Um, but then, you know, if, if we ever do anything around upgrades or additional functionality, if you have a bunch of uh, different types of skins and different collections and that, that equates to a new type of buff, anything like that, right? There's, there, there may be reasons why there, there would be a good, good reason to migrate your skin. So again, don't want to, don't want to say whether right now, yes or no, um, but it will become really clear in the future at what points it makes sense to, to migrate different things. Um, and then I think that as, as we go, um, everybody is going to see the power of what it means to have Gala's games on our own blockchain. Um, and there's, there's just going to be a really clear, like, Oh, that's, that's why I would do that. So, so yeah. So I don't know if that answers the question, but um, there will be a point at some point, I'm sure where it makes sense. Um, but right now I wouldn't be concerned about it. Cool. I'm going to jump in. A couple more people are, are vamping on the night mode fireflies. J Z. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure how you say your name there. And yeah, haunted mazes, the fireworks, green fog. That's interesting. What's the green fog, Willow? Oh, oh, at night on the, in the uh, on Halloween, haunted mazes. Cool. There's just so much we can do. So much we can do. Wait, and then there's something about leaks popping up about a goose. Was Dashi? Was that you? Now someone uh, used one of the uh, goose images from last week and asked for more leaks. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay, I thought there was something <laughs> new on the goose. I was like, did we already talk about that? No, we talk about like it. We said that we. Knife. <laughs> we, oh, of course, goose. I mean, geese are evil, man. But uh, <laughs> Still your pizza. we're waiting a little bit to to leak more about the golden goose. Any other questions? Guys, there's just now's the time. You got the whole, uh, you know, the dev team here listening and ready. We're excited to talk to you, answer questions. We got we got more stuff to share, but you know, now's the moment. I Will got a I question a here from Chuck Tonka. It Go says, it. Uh, is there going to be a daily release to the play test? We submit so many tickets. I'm sure you need to prioritize many of them. You know, Chuck, that's a really interesting, <laughs> interesting note. What? And, and I'll share a little bit. We're still nailing it down, but I'll share the the kind of the the notes that I've talked with, um, you know, both mysterious and a producer and and everybody is this idea of being very capable and able to do rapid releases uh, for a lot of reasons. For like you say, if there's some big bugs that we want fixed, just to get us uh, in the process of being able to release, but also to make our release process itself. Um, optimized and simplified so that, um, you know, if we just like six months from now, we have some sort of error that we actually introduced and we need an instant update. Um, we're not for the very first time running around and scrambling, trying to, you know, make a, a process that, you know, wasn't optimized. Something might take four, six or eight hours happen in only, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah, that's one of the things that we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks is building that muscle, as I call it, for um, you know, DevOps or live ops. That includes releases. Now, in terms of all the tickets that are submitted, um, here's here's a note on that. A bunch of them, and I, I, I'm not sure which, have already been found by SK and the group in our internal testing. Um, and there's a lot of work already happening. So the real question then becomes, how do we balance optimizing the release process plus the number of ticket fixes that are going in and uh, making sure that the code is, code is stable. So we'll be figuring that out over the next couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, we don't want to keep, we, we have no desire to leave those bugs in there any longer than you guys have the desire to see them in the game. So quick, quick movement. Expect that. I'm not sure what the speed is, but expect quick movement. I think that's a good note, which is, yeah, we're trying to move fast and we're trying to keep pushing the uh moving the bar and how fast we can move. and so we are definitely going to keep keep cruising 
keep uh, keep releasing, keep pushing our ability to release faster and faster. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's exciting to be in a place where the next release didn't need to come immediately because the the game is running, we're all playing, and it's 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 not falling over, which is it's which is great. <laughs> It's really great. You know, we run these tests and there's a lot of knowns and we do a lot of testing ahead of time, um, which is why we had some delays here. But there's, uh, you know, the things that were fixed worked and we're, we're seeing it working live with you all, which is really, really cool. I want to jump on two critical questions. There's some questions coming in related to this. There's two critical questions. Are we going to be able to farm cannabis? Not really sure on that one. Uh, that kind of touches some edges and some boundaries. So I don't know. Uh, some people will just have to see. I would just say, don't count on it. The second question, which is, uh, who asked that? Oh, poop FWB? Do the farm animals poop? Um, i tell you a quick story for about that. There was one game, and I can't remember what it was on the name of it on Facebook. There was a little farming animal game, and your animals did poop. And, you know, you can imagine that if you didn't come back for four, six, eight, 12 hours, 24 hours, what your farm looked like. Yeah, it was just all full of poop. And I realized by looking at that, that, uh, you know, there's no fun. One of their mechanics is you go pick up all the poop. I'm like, really? Nobody wants to play a game doing that. Well, let me just phrase it. Maybe nobody, but uh, not nobody. But definitely, I don't think that's kind of a thing we want to focus on. Now, could it evaporate into... Uh, fertilizer, then then today, uh, hey, maybe, but uh, there's so many other cooler things we can do besides uh, working on poop. Now, real questions: Who was that uh, that asked? Can we get? I think it was was it Ed seven seven seven? Somebody said, "Can we see a list of bugs?" Yeah, get a list of known bugs so we don't have two hundred plus people all submit the same bug. Uh, Michelle, you have a list, don't you? That people post to. Is it shared out? Or is it just in a, in a form that we see this, the spreadsheet on? It's just in an internal form, but I can 100% go through that with QA and get a list and post it in the tester channel. Yeah, that would be cool. And then if we also had some sort of note on, you know, it would be awesome. And guys, I'm, I don't, I don't want to overpromise for our team because we hadn't talked about that. But if there would be a way to um, show progress or expected releases when, you know, the fixes will come out. I know we track it internally. I don't want to make us uh, uh, get overload us with extra processes or anything, but I think that would be cool as well. So you guys in the community can see what's happening um, and see that there is so, there is you're gonna I think you're gonna be surprised by the amount of work uh, Volcron and team uh, uh, bug fixes and changes and everything they get done every day. It's it's pretty amazing to look at all the merge requests. Other other notes people were asking. I have to scroll up a lot now. Um, scroll past that uh, poop and dog there. That rocket unit post. <laughs> uh, that was like an interesting mouse uh, storyline story time. Uh, <laughs> what about hemp? Interesting. Maker. Hemp is a is a is a sort of a, a, a useful crop, right? Um. Anyways, what about special guy in town who would have a burning torch? in the night and by that he would give buffs rocket unit now you're talking my language man i love that idea and it's boops it's boops yes uh well do miranda skins get up graphic updates as well at we're, lumberjack uh, lazy lumberjack we're gonna go for everything yeah yeah so the question is just when on that stuff I'm getting some serious echo from somebody. That's, that's Farmer Michelle. Sorry. She's not yelling at us today, but <laughs> progress. Um, no, All that's right. great. So I'm, uh, let's maybe it's time to move on unless you guys have any uh, more questions you're seeing. Yeah, so next up was the question I saw a lot earlier in the chat, which is TownSwap. Um, so we are actually testing TownSwap uh, internally right now. So uh, the plan is to have that uh, for you all next week. Uh, we also are uh, finalizing a blog just so that uh, when we get that out there, there's information for everybody. So um, that's all coming next week. Um, so it's 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 almost there. Um, I think the good news is we continue to test things before we just 
throw them out to the community uh, more than I would say we did a year ago, which is really great progress. I'm sure a lot of you have been with us for a while. So we, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll have that town swap. Uh, we're planning to have that live next week at some point. Any other questions there? I see Wood I think next Dad week. Has a, Dash Rip Rock has a question, something like exactly when you're going to launch, exactly when you're going to turn on <laughs> earning, exactly when what they'll earn, exactly the date they'll be rich. I think Volcron can answer that one. <laughs> no, actually. We'll, especially so, especially uh, number four. <laughs> number four, when rich. <laughs> when rich. Hmm. Here, here's my take, guys. You're going to see us um, – let's just call it converge into the full public launch. Um, it will be dependent upon what we find in bugs and uh, what we find in performance testing and server scaling. Um, so just look for updates. And I, and I call it a conversion to the date um, because right now we are literally just in this mode of, you know, how do we get this thing robust and finishing up the features and bugs? But we've got a, we've got a cadence planned, or very close to having that cadence planned, and just watch the releases as they happen. And in terms of expanding the test, um, yeah, that'll happen as well. We'll just watch as, uh, as we can make sure server scale. We did, by the way, have a, a very successful test last night. The full list is open um, and didn't crash. So we're, we're good. That is an awesome sound effect. There we go. There we go. Had to give that. me some claps. Yeah, that's so. Yeah, thank you. Know the Volcron engineering team really, really, you know, uh, really made it happen. So, oh, why did I post multiple milks? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if anything comes up on that poison. There was a question from uh, Peter D asking about. Can you tell us? Of any ideas you're planning to get people to spend in game, which I know we've covered in other uh, AMAs, but maybe do you feel like doing a recap or high level of that SageMaker? Or... Yeah, I think let's let's wait on that because that gets into that um, that mode where I want to make sure that our our you know, whole economy is clean. And the question is is spend in game. What what's the source of the question? Are you thinking about you know the tokenomics plan that we had? Uh, set up and that it's really based upon, you know, the income and it, it converts into rewards that we give players. Um, but let's just say you have a team of people who are um, very uh, aware and very experienced that uh, in-game economies, we're going to be bringing that to bear. And, you know, there will be, um, I think you can already see some of the stuff that's, that's coming up in terms of, you know, we've talked about decorations, we've talked about um, buff, uh, more crafting, more NFT, more design space. I mean, every week Mal comes up with something new. So uh, let's just hold off on getting into specifics on that right now. Would you guys consider making the trough and feed mill one half of their space, SageMaker? Uh, that way you could place them next to each other on the new grid. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting, right? Now you kind of now you're starting to see some of the issues about how uh, not having these big chunky grids could help you, right? We'll have to see on those things. What right now I'm just holding the line. I'm saying let's get the the current um, buildings, new art style, you know, ready to go. As we're going through this test and we get the grid and precision placement issues, the UX sorted out, then we can start looking at those things. But as I just said in, in our in a meeting earlier, I really want um, want to make sure that we get Mal, Michelle, other very experienced people on the team to help us understand the ramifications of things like that. Right? We want to be very very careful we don't accidentally you know knock out a table leg uh, through our exuberance and excitement, uh, knock a table leg out of the, the you know the 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 carefully balanced Houndstar gameplay and strategy. Only to end up something that doesn't that works less well. So yeah. I saw another question here, SageMaker, if you're okay with me answering it, which is how many people have played <laughs> in the playtest so far? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that because we do uh, we do want more of uh, more folks to show up. So I think that's okay with cool. you. Right? So I just I just looked at the data. Uh, I won't give an exact number, but it's it's over three hundred unique people have played so far in this playtest. 
It's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool to see. Um, I don't know if that's more or less than people were expecting, but I think for me, that's really exciting to see. Not just that we, we opened this up to a bunch of people that can't play, but that all of you actually hopped in and played it. So really, yeah. really cool. It's good representation of active players. Uh, and I say active players, people are in competitions, people who are, you know, playing regularly. And those are some of the very early, uh, the early people that we let in because we know you play. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, concurrent users, I'm not going to give that info right now. Um, but as we continue going on with tests, we'll, we'll possibly talk more about that. Um, but that is what was about concurrent a users. Good, good question from Moisey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's kind of that gets a little bit too much into um, uh, our data systems and whatnot. But yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I get what I get is people want to know: is this robust? Are there people in there playing? Are the servers going to stand up when we open up to everybody? And that's part of what we'll be testing as well. Um, Grumpy says, why use that much time on artwork? Get it up and running first. Yes, that's what we're doing. Uh, the whole art update system and process and um, time of day, that's all be running in a, in a, in a parallel channel. Um, and uh, really, the team is focused on getting uh, the current stuff up and running uh, translation of the current models into the game. So... So we're both happening at the same time, but right now the art update is not impacting uh, getting this test up and running in the gameplay set and fixing bugs and everything. And what's cool that's that's worth talking about is just how the art is, it's not just each individual piece of art, but there's an art system. So we, we take a look at all of these uh, smaller pieces of art um, and make sure that the, the system really works, that it looks good in game, that's something we're really excited about. And then once you have that system in place and you really understand the the direction you want to go art speeds up super super fast and so it's it's really getting excited about the direction that we're headed which is is the hard work but the, the great work that's been done yeah i call it the recipe some people call it a, the you know the art guideline or the art art style you know, guidelines but yeah we get the recipe right and then we turn the crank one of the things i'm really i really dislike is starting early and generating a bunch of art before you have the recipe nailed down. Because all that does is just makes you have to go back and redo a bunch of art. So that's why you're seeing these these uh, one, one, ones and twos and maybe three pieces of art each week because we're really focused on getting that recipe and then being ready to turn loose. Uh, we have a very uh, proficient and exciting um, outsourcing art house. Somebody actually who, uh, some of the folks actually worked on CNC Generals back in the day, actually which is cool, uh, but these guys are great at what they do. And when we're ready, um, we'll, we'll you know, open the floodgates. I think it's time to move on. Let's get, let's get rolling. You know, we got some other cool stuff to talk about, right? Yeah, I think we're moving on to leaks. I think it's Mal's turn. Is there anyone else before me? Just because... Argyle sort also do the, there's the ghost card, the meta change, well, the research sends the changes. And of course, a little message to pass over. I think you're, it's you, Mal. Go for it. <laughs> it's all We're you. <laughs> all you. Okay, wonderful. Well, gather around, everyone. And our picture of all surrounded in a nice forest. I can see stars and there's a cool wind. The fire's burning nicely. I do have a message that I just want to... I'm not going rogue. I spoke to Sage the other day, and you have noticed some gifts have emerged from such conversation. I uh, I want to address uh, something, and I don't enjoy saying this part, but I just want to be very clear. 99% of you are amazing. You are... I've never seen a community like this. You are... Just so treasured, and the team adores you so much. But there are some of you. And the only way I can describe, and it is very, very few, it is a ultra tiny amount. The only way I can describe it is you come to your fridge, you take the milk out, you look at the date. You're not sure. So you do a smell test. 
He's still not sure, so you take a swig of that milk, and it is in that moment that you realise that that milk is going sour. And what you do is you take it and you just throw it in a bin because you cannot save it. It is, it's not great. No one enjoys doing it, but you've just got to get rid of it because you cannot stop the process. The souring has begun now and the result is lumpy, smelly milk. And I don't like that. I just, the mere force of it is not nice. And it made me reflect back to a conversation I had some some years ago when I was in the army. Someone told me that he was confused by the fact that there are people out there with such sad lives, such miserable lives, that they will go around and dissipate and actively evaporate away the happiness of, of others for the mere fact is they are sad or miserable. Now, for whatever reason that is, I want this community, this our channel, what we're doing here, to be a sanctuary. So for those who do not wish to dissipate or evaporate, anyone's happiness can come here and find happiness and a nice place. Because we're all human, we all have bad days, and it's just one of those. But bringing it in here, I don't want it. I don't want to see it anymore. And I am literally being to the point of the passive aggressive comments, the insulting the staff, the people who are doing your little emojis on those insults. I am now watching every single one of it because it's boring. We can just be adults and we could have conversations and things would be a lot better. We'd be able to get better feedback because everyone was being an adult and it wasn't such a worry or a political mess just to share something or whatever else. It doesn't need to be insults to the team and I'm just sick of seeing it. So I have asked Michelle that when she goes to the fridge, if she finds any milk that is souring or has soured, bin it. It doesn't matter if it's a full six pinter, a free pinter, if it's shameful and wasteful, it is just what it is because you cannot save it. And I just want to again point out that this is literally most people listening do not need to concern themselves with this because you're great. But I know that there is just those very few of you. And the reason I say it is because it's very noticeable, sour milk, taste, smell, all of it. It stinks. And no one likes it around. And it takes only the one to cause so much more. And that is why it might seem like a bit petty. But it's, I'm bored of hearing the excuses of, I'm just so honest. I'm just being blunt. That's just what I think. And da, 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 da. It's just on and on with all these weird logics of why people can just come in and insult people and be negative. And no more. No more. It ends now. I just, I'm fed up of it. This is a nice place. This is the greatest community I've ever seen. And I will do everything I can to protect that, even if it rem means removing some of you more active people who just cannot physically find it in you to be nice or structure things better. Now, that was something I don't really enjoy saying, so I don't want to say it again. We're all going to be nice and everything's going to be great and all the milk's going to remain fresh. And on that note, I will then start leaking all the good stuff and go back to a positive note. And I'm sure people are dying to know that there's been, well, I'll tell you what, I started off, I leaked. I got a bit antsy and I just started leaking Sage on Monday, thinking it was like Wednesday and it was the start of the week. Couldn't help myself, I went all in, there was art, there was everything. I had. I was a bit worried because the engineer was still a wonderful engineer and I need to get him in Discord, but I don't want his inbox getting absolutely assassinated by questions. But uh, he's amazing and he was working very hard to get a feature request I shared in the last day of May before a political drama started. And I was told to go and learn to play the game again because that's the kind of madness that goes on now. But um, I've wait, done wait, some- who told you to go play the game again, Mal? Oh, I can't, I can't remember, but it's- Oh, it's somebody it's, in the community. Yeah, it was sort of, oh, it was sort of okay, next to me. I can't remember now, and I see yeah. the, 
the, you know, the fact emojis on. I think, geez, he's just trying to share an idea that's, you know, just on the spot. But uh, anyway, so I went away and forced around what I was trying to say so I could make it a bit more clear in future. And then it occurred to me I could do it anyway in three stages. And uh, at any point, it could be stage one, two or three or all of them or stage one and three. And every single time it would be a very different type of meta, but they could all be pieced in like a puzzle. And I thought that was wonderful because like now we're going to do the first sort of piece one. How does that change the game? Is it fun? What does it do? And then we'll move on to the next phases. And I'm going to remind everyone that this is a meta change. All what's discussed is meta changes, not core. So the, these things are not permanent. It is just different types of metas that we can do. Why are we just going? Well, why am I going to be ham over here while uh, Sage is looking left? I'm just going to run right and do what we can because it's fun to get some of these wild features in and see what actually happens. And uh, that's the starting one, which uh, I think I spoke with Sage the other day to tell him what my plan is. We're going to be spending stars. And I went and leaked it in Discord. Um, people were a bit like, huh? Spending stars as a currency is interesting in town, Star. Raw made a very funny joke that the leaderboard's going to look like a stock exchange, and I was generally laughing so hard uh, when I read that because that's exactly what I want to see. People sat there just so curious. Is the person above you bought his loggers? Has he bought his nuclear power plant yet? You don't know, and you're trying to calculate are they going to be 50 million stars later or whatever else soon. Now, the idea is, is it makes you think a little bit more it's been done in the sense of nuclear power plants, the research center, loggers, and tractors. You do not need, you know, loggers and tractors are a luxury unit, regardless of your argument to see some players refer to them as need. I need them for the competition. No, they just help, and they are the better option to have. And therefore, you are all now in the same boat. It's not or more or less unfair in the sense of if everyone wants one, you're all going to go through the same process. How have I decided to price stars on things? To be honest, I didn't want to go down the whole complicated route, so I kept it very simple. One red steel is 50,000 stars right now. So things have just been priced in that manner. How much is it going to cost in terms of red steel? So I'll load up so I can give all the information that's that I'm saying now because I know some people must be so confused and I'm reading the screen and can't see the chat. So I've added three new construction templates. What is a construction template for those that don't understand? This is the cost of building the building. So it could be 10 lumber, 10 wood, 10 energy. That is a template. The ingredients that go into the construction. I have now added on stars to be one of those. So you'll pay cash and stars and some ingredients. As I said, it was on the four things mentioned, nuclear plant, research center, the logger and the tractor. The chain, the prices of these are gonna be in the sense of, as I say, the red steel. So the nuclear power plant is gonna be 10 million stars. This is 200 red steel. If you were to sell 200 red steel, you would have enough stars. Based off the chat, I see people, you know, were around the 70, 100, 120 going up from there, depending. So for some people, it might be an hour of their game. So others, it might be an hour and a half, two hours. It really depends. And then there's the factor of how many do you want? How many hours are you going to lose in stars of selling? You know, and uh, you've got to remember there's a sense of some people, you know, they get a grey screen, wake up, they've lost eight hours of gameplay. That, I have tried to factor that in, in the sense of, A, the logic of people do catch up still, based on those things, and then trying to not be so on everything. Uh, so we've done it on a few things in the manner of, I understand people do lose some hours of the competition sometimes to try and weigh those in, but these are all experiments and tests. If it's awful and makes the game awful, everyone can relax because I'll be in the chat always and we'll be discussing it. And if there's ways to make it more fun, other things that need stars uh, or whatever else, that's the goal. But for now, we are going to trial this feature fairly, uh, as in give it a good run because I want to see exactly what happens. So I'll continue.
10 million stars for the nuclear power plants. It's going to be 200 red steel. A research center is going to cost you 5 million stars. That's 100 red steel. Now, I haven't taken away the other things that are needed, so you still need you know, the 10 million in cash, uh, and you need steel and iron. Research center still got lumber and oak requirements, as well as the cash. Now, the loggers and the house, uh, the logger, the logger house and the farm tractor. A million stars each. That's 20 red steel. So depending on how many you have or would like, that depends on how much you'll pay overall. In a sense of this is where your strategy kicks in. You know, can you handle just having lumberjacks? Do you really need a tractor, for example? It is your, this is your opportunity to apply that strategy in in how much on, of what you buy knowing that other people, if they wish to do these things, have to lose those hours versus you, which is the interesting and fun part, I believe. So the overall changes to the research center. I removed the minor walk speed. This has been an interesting one. Talk about it in Discord one day. No one likes the minor walk speed very much. The next day, everyone likes the minor walk speed. So it actually gives me the opportunity to remove it and put something else in and then see what happens. And we're going to do the water facility walk speed. So instead of the minor walk speed, it'll be the 25% water facility walk speed. And the ingredients for that have gone from 50 water barrels to 100 water barrels. I know, so cruel. The big boost cash cost was 250 million. I shaved off a 30 million for you because you're going to need to use the 30 million or some of that to go and buy the things to make the big boost, such as 15 fancy cakes and 10 jack-o'-lanterns. Those who were in the chat know I leaked three ingredients and then later realized, very silly me, forgot that you can't just put four ingredients on things. And I even tried to be cheeky and see if we could get that work in. But no, that is still remains not a task for Play Canvas. So I had to remove the food parcel. There was originally five food parcels to accompany the big boost. But now it is just the 10 lanterns, 10 jack-o'-lanterns, and 15 fancy cakes. Why? Because it's metas in metas, and these have all been different. Well, the fancy cake really didn't really get a chance to be a meta. It was in a multi-meta. But um, the jack-o'-lanterns you would have done around Halloween. And now you have the, the, the metas in the metas. And it's interesting because how are people going to do it? Are they going to rush all of these first and stash them in the corner and pray they don't need to move that storage? Or are they going to try and do it in the corner when they've got to red steel? Are you going to rush red steel and these at the same time? It's all very interesting. And I look forward to reading everyone's strategies on how this works. The... Logger, I went and changed the ingredients slightly. I added 25 wooden boxes to the 25% logger walk speed buff. I think that was pretty generous in my eyes. It was a very light change, but it adds a slight change to it. So that's everything in the sense of the research center and the stars. I know some people are now probably going to be asking, what did he say? How many again? and so on. I will be sure to share this in the chat so everyone has it to read in the pins. The ghost card. So if anyone remembers that there was a debate I was having with myself as in which ghost card would I do? The water facility, which has now become the gallon master or the feed mill. And it looked like it was a very tough decision for the community. I seen the chat explode. It was hilarious. But it was leaning more to water facility, I felt. But that didn't mean the feed mill was going away. And I think given what's coming in March in terms of metas and the style of meta and what you'll be making, I think the feed mill is ultra fitting for this competition. So you will be getting that. I do not have the name. People know I struggle so much because there was a day... Many, many, many months ago, I thought it was super smart to say all ghost cards would start with a G. I've continued that tradition and will do so for as long as I can. And then 
this is why sometimes I just have to announce what the ghost card's for, but there's no name because I really want to try and get it right. And of course, I enjoy listening to your suggestions in Discord as well. I don't know if I've missed any leaks other than we said we don't know if we're going to push Friday. I'm going to do everything to push today, uh, just so everyone knows, because I really want to get those changes in your hands for the weekend so you can relax with both new changes and the playtest. And I'd also, while I'm here, like to just give a shout out to Vulcron and the team because they've been absolutely killing it and they go to bed so late, they get up so early, you know, they're just all going ham over there and it's great to see. So uh, thanks for listening. Woohoo, Mal. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, I love that, as I mentioned before, all the new gameplay vistas, the new design spaces that you're opening up with your creativity there. Um, yeah, buying things with stars, really cool idea. And one of the things I also want to share out there is, uh, uh, and Mal raised it, but I want to emphasize it. Uh, he's trying a bunch of new ideas. If something doesn't work, um, we'll take it out. 